Hey everybody, I'd like to talk about the relationship between art and technology. They really do go hand in hand and it's important uh, to be able to, to see uh, what they do for one another. So a lot of times when we think about art and we think about art history, we think about something like this, something from the Renaissance. You can uh, recognize this painting by Botticelli about the birth of Venus or something like this from Michelangelo, the Sistine Chapel. And we can admire and respect this artwork for its uh, amazing quality and just the artistry and skill involved in creating these things is pretty amazing. And if you look back and you think about these artists and craftsmen that worked on these paintings and worked on these objects, you recognize that they were uh, doing something similar to what we do today. In other words, they had a client, they had to fulfill uh, an order. Um, at that time, they called them patrons and uh, they were paid to do this work. And in this case, particularly, uh, the art was created to tell a story. And it was done in an era when many people couldn't read and they could look at these paintings and be taught about the Bible. And so that's really what illustrators, designers, um, other artists are hired to do today is to tell stories and to say things and to show things visually. Well, with each advancement of technology, artists have come along and advanced the art form forward and used that new technology to do something different, something that hadn't been done before. Uh, one example would be how art and design and graphic design specifically has been affected by developments in technology. For example, um, back during the Renaissance, uh, at this time when artists like Botticelli and Michelangelo were painting, the only way to create books uh, was to actually hand write those books and embellish them by hand with painting and, and other uh, artistic craft. That was a very laborious process. And being able to use a book as an informational tool, as a promotional tool, as a storytelling uh, device was very hard to do because you just couldn't afford to have uh, a book of that quality, that handmade quality. That was until an inventor came along and decided to, to work on a printing press. And that was Johann Gutenberg who developed the first uh, movable type printing press, which allowed for the development of printing books. And that was a big advancement in technology at that time. It meant that you could take the labor of one person and magnify it so that you could produce multiple copies of whatever it was they created. And that's when printing was born. And when printing became a thing and that technology was developed, suddenly now you needed artists not only to be those that could create pretty pictures, but could also compose text, compose pictures, put them together in what we might think of as graphic design. Um, here you have an example of that movable type, those metal slugs that were put together to make the printed page. Um, laborious process, yes, but it allowed for duplication. So you could do the work once and repeat it multiple times by making prints. So that technology was embraced and over the generations, um, it got perfected and improved. Um, Here's a step forward in that graphic design technology. They had something called a linotype machine where you had essentially a typewriter uh, connected to this big machine that would collect and organize those metal, metal letters of type. And the operator could type in the message and the machine would then compose those letters uh, in, in sequence uh, behind the scenes, making a printing plate. Uh, or a printing block that could be used to print those pages. Uh, an amazing advancement, which made it possible to do newspapers and other things on a, on a faster, larger scale. Uh, here's another example of how those machines looked. The operator had a keyboard, uh, but you then you were attached to this big mechanical machine. You know, 60 years later, we get into what you think of as a computer using a keyboard in a similar way, actually. 
uh, somewhere mid-century, you started getting into new technology, which involved typewriters and typesetters, where you could actually take, instead of having to use that linotype or letterpress uh, process, you would actually be able to type it directly on paper using a typewriter. And then those uh, written documents could then be composed in what we think of as graphic design. And this is where you start to combine pictures and images. For example, this wax coating machine was necessary to be able to take those written blocks of text, add a, an adhesive wax to the back, so then they could be pasted up on a pasteboard. And so here we start to finally get to what we think of today as a graphic designer. You know, 40s, 50s, 60s, mid-century, we're talking about this process where you actually had to take uh, printed materials, compose them on an artboard with that, you know, adhesive wax or rubber cement, an X-Acto blade, and put them together to make your graphic design. This was, again, another laborious process where you had to take these little pieces of paper, compose them, make them fit, make them the right size. Uh, there was no spell check back then. So anything you did uh, was done uh, permanently, not permanently, but uh, done uh, deliberately on paper. Here's another picture of that on a light table. Someone working over a grid, composing their page, making sure that their text and their columns lined up properly. Then along came the computer. Computer, the development of the computer, I think is just as significant or even more so than the Gutenberg press. This now gave full control over the printed page uh, or the, you know, the composed page uh, to the designer using a keyboard and a mouse. You didn't have to do that paste up process anymore with an X-Acto knife and glue, get your fingers all sticky. You could actually just work on that, on that keyboard and mouse and now anything is possible. You can combine text and images in dramatic and unique ways. And so here's that situation where artists had a choice to make. Were we gonna stick with the old methods, the old handmade, handcrafted process, or were we gonna adopt this new technology and take it somewhere else? Of course, over the past few decades, the Apple computer specifically has gone through a variety of developments making it easier and more productive to work uh, in the computer environment as a graphic designer. Um, as the computers got better, designs got easier to make and more complex. Here's an interesting thing to point out. Using the computer, we now have things like vector graphics. And here you have uh, Adobe Illustrator that adopted that famous Renaissance painting uh, that Botticelli did of Venus as their icon, as their logo, because they wanted to make a connection between that fine art painting from the past, bringing it into the future and showing that anything is now possible on the computer. Uh, we've even gone a step further where now we have our iPads and our Apple pencils or our um, Microsoft um, Surface tablet or whatever you choose to use where we can now paint directly on the screen using a stylus and create our, our vision uh, right there digitally. So the question again, as an artist or a designer, are you going to embrace this technology? Do you wanna go back to the past, pick up an old methodology, or do you wanna see if you can push the boundaries of what this can do to enhance what, uh, what you create? So one of the things that technology has always tried to capture is color. And that's an important part of our discussion is the way that we see color. Because the human eye has the ability to capture millions and millions of colors, which gives us the complete spectrum of, of our visual of the world around us. And that's what uh, helps us see things and enjoy the, the world around us. Well, Artists from the beginning of time have been trying to capture that and recreate that in one way or another. Whether they tried to do it with uh, paint and brush, trying to create pigments and mix those colors together to create something vibrant, which was 
some representation of the world around them, whether it was developing uh, color photography with color photography film, trying to capture an image directly of what you saw and be able to represent that or reproduce that. To then improving the printing process where you could actually take a photograph or a painting and recreate it and put together a print out of you know, primary colors and, and reproduce it multiple times. And every year, this technology gets better and better and better to both capture and then reproduce color. Until now, you have all kinds of sales pitches for new, new devices, new televisions, new uh, cameras that can capture so many millions of colors. I mean, whether it's 4K or 5K or some other you know, fancy HD, everybody's trying to compete with their technology to capture and display the most colors. Uh, to the viewer because we're, we're humans, we respond to color. And so when we're presented with a printed object or a display screen that really is vibrant, uh, we enjoy it. And so understanding how that color technology works is gonna make you a better artist. And that's where I think today we live in the best time where you have all of these options available to you. You have a tablet, which you can carry in your hand. You have a desktop computer that you can use to develop something on a grand, grander scale. Um, you, have, you still have oil painting and photography and anything to capture your vision. And so what it really comes down to is, do you have the desire to embrace technology? And then do you have the imagination to take it somewhere? Where are you gonna take it? What are you gonna do with it? Uh, every generation has that choice. And I think we do as well. And I have no idea where we're gonna go and what's gonna be developed, but it's exciting to watch and to participate and uh, you know, play my little part. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea on you know, how technology has advanced through the centuries and where we are now. And maybe you'll be the next person to develop something that we'll all be adopting and talking about you know, 100 years from now. All right, thanks for listening. See you next time.